Hello world, Wendy from Cali here, back with a mixed Manny chat. And let me just turn the music down a little bit because it feels really loud for some reason. But as I mentioned in my last video when I unboxed the Color Street Color Play Forever Yours sub box, I am doing a gray, what is it, grayscale? Gradient? Gray gradient mixed Manny. Uh, for Shannon's Facebook group, the January Nail Fee Challenge has a bonus challenge with that gray scale, gray gradient. I really should look it up, but I know it's supposed to be gray, so here we are. So this is Mind Matters. It is a retired set, uh, and I got it from Stacy Adams when she had her last ruckus. Um, if you are part of her Facebook group, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, you should join it. Stacy Sassy Crew in Facebook. Uh, link below to all of my Color Street friends, Facebook groups, and uh, YouTube channels. And then this one is from the Winter Catalog, Frostbite. And I really, really wanted to wear this one. Especially right now because it's so flipping cold. My hands are like frozen and I'm getting over a cold from the weekend. So if my voice sounds weird, it's because I was sick this weekend uh, and just getting over it. But yes, I wanted to mix these two together because I thought that Mind Matters really goes well with that dark, dark gray color and frostbite. And I didn't want my nails to be super light in color. So I'm going to use the strips that have the little, I call them Minecraft squares. Um, because the kiddos all seem to really love Minecraft. And those squares just remind me of Minecraft. I don't know. Those of you that are parents or aunties and uncles, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about if you've got young kids. But yeah, anywho, let's get started, shall we? It has been a minute since I've done a mixed vanny. Uh, usually I do like one a week. Uh, sometimes I might do two a week. It depends on my mood and it depends on how rough I am with my nails. But the last mixed vanny that I did, which included a retired set meant to be, and another set favorite flannel, I loved it so much I didn't want to take it off, uh, but I decided to do my nails today because one, I didn't get a chance to do it over the weekend, and two, it was starting to have a lot of wear and tear on the edges right there, uh, so I, I took it off after coming home from work, uh, and now my nails are all prepped, ready to go for me to put on a mixed mani. Uh, but I really want to do it quick because I have been really engrossed in uh, audiobooks and actually reading an ebook uh, and also reading a hard copy, hardcover book. So I got lots going on as far as reading goes. But the big thing is, is that uh, I, if you guys have been watching my videos and you're on this channel like whenever I post you'll know that I was reading some books by Sarah Knight and her books had a lot of cursing in it so I apologize pardon my French uh, if you look up the titles of Sarah Knight's books uh, be prepared to see cuss words but anyways fast forward I'm done listening to all the audiobooks for her and I started listening to an audiobook called Spark Joy, which was kind of a companion book to Marie Kondo's uh, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. I think that's the title of the book. Anyways, now I'm reading the actual book uh, and really getting excited about the whole process of tidying up. It's completely different. The KonMari method is like way different than most people think as far as how to tidy up. And so I'm excited. 
Uh, I wasn't ready for it before because like a few years back, it was like really super popular. Uh, everybody was talking about it. And, you know, Netflix had a series uh, with Marie Kondo in it and all of that. I wasn't ready for it at that time. But after all the books from Sarah Knight, I am actually like ready, ready. Like I'm so ready. And although I share a home with Panda Bear and the Rents and Buddha, my pup, uh, I'm ready to really embark on this journey of tidying up. And yeah, uh, the first, first part of the journey, uh, before even getting started, uh, is that you have to kind of envision the why, like why, like how do you envision the space and how do you envision, you know, your life, your lifestyle being, uh, once you've completed tidying up, like what are, what are you doing it for, uh, is a better way of putting it. And so I haven't started that part yet. I'm still in the process of reading the whole book, uh, but I ha I'm going to open up a journal and just write, like hand write, write, like when have we done that? I have chicken scratch for handwriting, um, but I am, that is like what I'm going to do. And so I'm going to probably take my sketchbook that I have that I use, um, maybe not, no, maybe not my sketchbook. I have another book somewhere sitting here and this is why I need to tidy up because I can't find a gosh darn thing. <laughs> um, but I have a book. I own one already. I don't need to go out and buy it. Uh, so I'm going to use that book to journal about why I want to tidy up and transform this house. So one step at a time, of course, as I mentioned, busy reading the actual book. And I am also, um, what am I doing? Busy reading that book. Wow. My brain. My brain is dead. <laughs> the after effects of being sick <laughs> is you kind of forget. That's fine. It'll come back to me. We're here to we're here to do nails, right? Let's let's get started. Talking too much. That's like a sign that I'm just talking too much. Let's just get going, shall we? Okay. I wanted to have my thumbs and my ring fingers with this frostbite. So I'm going to do that. So these two are going to be the same. And then I want it dark, the rest of it dark. So I'm not even going to use any of these light strips because I think I could save those for another time. I mean, not I think. I know I can save them for another time. But what I am going to do, however, is this one for sure. I'm going to make a nail stick so I can remember that I used this set. This past weekend, so I was sick on Friday. I was already starting to feel it, like, before I left work, I was already feeling, like, a sore throat and, like, definitely was feeling like I got abused on Thursday because I went to go work out at Get Fit Factory, uh, and, um, instead of Alfred being there... Alfred is one of the instructors. Instead of him being there instructing his Tone It Up class, we had a substitute, Orlando. 
And <laughs> Orlando is small and mighty. He kicks your butt. Um, I remember the first time I ever went to get Fit Factory, uh, Orlando's class was the one that I took. And I was the first person there uh, that day. And I was like, this is weird. It's like a small little hole-in-the-wall studio. And, um, sorry, I'm trying to remember if I want to do one light one or not. Actually, I do want to do one light one. We are going to do one light one. So let me put these here. And then for Mind Matters, I will do those two dark. So that means I need this one right here. Oh, and let's take one for the nail stick. All right, but Orlando's class. Let's get back to, let's get back to it. So Orlando's really good at working you out. Uh, so if you're ever in the El Monte area and you want to go take a workout class, just $10 for a class, uh, Tone it up with Orlando will kick your butt. <laughs> um, I personally love classes uh, with Susan. She's not affiliated with Get Fit Factory, but she does rent the space, I guess. Or she utilizes the space. Uh, and... Um, yeah. So... Um, shoot. Okay, I think those are all the ones I need. All right. Uh, Susan's classes are awesome because she teaches Zumba and Groove Hip Hop, which are my favorite classes, along with Alfred's kickboxing, cardio kickboxing class. Um, those are my favorites. Um, but... Thursday night, I took the class, whipped my butt, I was like doggone tired, and then Friday at work, I started feeling like a scratchy throat, and I was like, oh no, I think I'm getting sick, and my niece Emmeline, we were going to celebrate her birthday this weekend, and I was like, please, please, please don't let me be like full on sick, uh, so Saturday, because I was not feeling the best, I didn't go work out. I didn't take the Zumba class with Susan that I had planned on doing. And uh, my brother and his family did come around. I was running errands with Panda Bear in the morning. And dropped off some stuff with my sister-in-law, Carla. And her kids and then we got home my brother was still maybe um, an hour away uh, according to find my friend on iPhones so my brother has an iPhone my mom has an iPhone so she likes to keep track of where her kids are at the ones that have iPhones so she can keep track of my brother so he was like about an hour out and so I really 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 wanted broccoli cheddar soup so panda bear and I went to the store so that I can buy some of the ingredients we didn't have at home to make broccoli cheddar soup and then we got home and it was like not even like a, a few minutes we from when we got home I was still putting away groceries my brother and his family showed up and so we went out to eat and we finally got to try Mandarin Noodle House, which is this historical restaurant here in Monterey Park, cash only, uh, another hole in the wall place, but that's been there for forever. And we've been wanting to go, but it's cash only, so you know. My parents don't usually care for going to cash-only places. 
uh, unless we really, really know it's good. But wanted to try this place and finally got a chance to try it. And it was really funny because the we're not sure if it's the owner or family of whoever owns the restaurant or whatever, but the waiter um, and his buddies <laughs> that were helping out at the restaurant reminded us so much of the uh, Netflix series, uh, The Brother's Son. Uh, if you haven't seen that series and you have Netflix, uh, even though uh, it can be a little bit bloody and gory and, and violent, uh, I uh, loved it. I'm usually not a violence, violence and gore and blood and all that fan, but it was very well done and highly recommend that series. It's only eight episodes. You can get through it in like a weekend or less. Um, but yeah, such a good series. And uh, it was filmed in a lot of the areas here in the San Gabriel Valley. So could totally recognize a bunch of the places. And anyways, I mentioned that because when we went to eat on Saturday at the Mandarin uh, Noodle House, uh, the waiter and his buddies kind of just reminded us the vibe was very, very the brother's son for sure. So, um, so yeah, there, if you ever go to eat there, recommend the thin onion pancakes and the beef stew handmade noodles. Those two items, those two dishes are really good. And I think there was a spicy chili oil uh, noodle soup that uh, was also pretty tasty. Uh, that has, my niece Emmeline, we were celebrating her birthday, she completely surprised us because she ordered that. We didn't know she was big on spicy. So apparently she and her mom are big on spicy. So is my brother. My I knew my brother uh, liked spicy. I'm like the only one in my family that's like not able to handle spice that well uh but yeah my brother we knew liked spicy um but yeah this is a new development for us that my niece emmelyn likes spicy so one of the reasons why we chose that restaurant too was because she also loves pot stickers and they had pot stickers there so we knew that she would enjoy um but it was funny because we were all trying to figure out what we were going to order and of course we're telling my dad and my mom like what we want to order and my dad goes to order and he uh picks the wrong dish for my niece emmelyn <laughs> which he, if my niece emmelyn wasn't there he would have picked the wrong dish for me that's just how that's just how it works like my dad will order what he wants to order or what he thinks he heard we want to order, but it's usually not what it was. He'll know exactly what he wants um, and we'll leave it at that. So we were going to go and order, you know, what Emlyn really wanted. And yeah, she was like, wait, I wanted to order. And so <laughs> she's already at the point where she's, wants to be grown up and order on like for herself order on her own and I'm just like oh my gosh like they grew up so fast so yeah spicy noodles for this little girl and she wanted to order on her own I'm like what where does the time go <laughs> and her little brother Maximus is just the most adorable little dude um the waiter called him a brainiac because he had this really overgrown cap, baseball cap he was wearing, that had a brain with glasses on, and it was just so cute. Maximus. Oh my gosh. Oh, the day he can fully talk and speak full sentences and wants to order on his own, I'm going to feel so old. <laughs> 
but yeah um so yeah we had a great time we got lucky because we showed up at the restaurant and there was still parking and there was seating so we got seated and you know lo and behold you know whenever panda bear and i go out to eat anywhere usually we bring the crowd like we show up and we don't have to wait very long and then all of a sudden it's like an hour wait behind us or something you know it's like that's how uh it usually works so we got lucky we got seated right away and got to order and all that good stuff um so yeah after that then my niece emmeline had said she wanted a cake from sun mary uh which is a bakery an uh, asian bakery and uh so we went to sun mary and she once again shocked her auntie uh she chose a matcha tiramisu cake like what what going to be 11 year old likes matcha i'm like geez like this girl she's like all grown up she's more grown up than her than her auntie her flavor palette is like very sophisticated <laughs> so i'm just i'm in awe like i'm like what so so yeah but I don't know. I'm just, I'm in a, I'm in shock. But yes, um, after that, we came home. We did the cake. She opened up her presents. And I made her because at the restaurant, she wanted to order a lemonade, but they didn't have it. And so when we got home, I made her a, a homemade lemonade. Um, and had cake. We played some games, so Maximus is really big right now on the show Bluey, and so we started streaming that from my phone to the TV in the living room, and um, Emmeline, Panda Bear, and I played Uno. And then I had this mashup game of Operation Perfection. So if you guys know the game Operation, uh, the board game Operation, you'll know that, you know, you're supposed to try to pick up pieces, like operate, like you're supposed to take the pieces out um, of this body-shaped board game and there's lots of different little pieces of stuff uh, on the board and you're supposed to like you know according to whatever card you uh, picked up or whatever you're supposed to pick out these pieces without touching the, the edges um, with your tweezers and if you touch the edge then you're out like and then the game perfection is one that no wonder my generation has so much anxiety. It's a board game where you set a timer, you push the board game, the board down, and you're trying to put all the pieces in before the time runs out. And if the time runs out, uh, the board pops up and all of your pieces go flying, scattering all over the place. So that's the game of perfection. So Operation Perfection is a mashup of the two games. Basically, you have these cards f that are listed as easy, medium, and hard. Uh, easy being, you know, only a few pieces need to be placed in, uh, which is worth one point. Medium, more pieces, worth two points. And hard, you have to fill the whole board with pieces um, and beat the timer and you get three points and so we were trying to play that with my niece Emmeline but she tried once and uh, so we tried on hard first because we were practicing and she was like oh no I don't want to play I just want to watch and so <laughs> Panda Bear and I were playing the game together while my niece was watching us play and I ended up winning by default because 
I was able to finish uh, in less time than Panda Bear was the three or four times that we had played. So, so yeah. But I noticed that my niece, Emmeline, is very true to her Capricorn ways. She is a perfectionist and she's afraid of failure. And so sometimes that fear of failure um, means that she's not going to try. So, like, for example, we were eating and they only gave us chopsticks and they only gave us a fork and a spoon, a plastic fork and spoon for Maximus, you know, the littlest one. He's not even two yet. And my niece, Emmeline, was like, I need a fork. And so, you know, my gra my mom, grandma, my mom uh, went up and got Emmeline uh, a decent fork to use. And um, <laughs> every time we go out to eat with Emmeline, we're always like, hey, we'll teach you. We'll teach you how to use chopsticks. And she's like, no. Um, but for her birthday, I gave her a spoon and fork set of her favorite Sanrio character, Karomi. Uh, and what I plan to do for Christmas is to get her a set of Karomi chopsticks because I have a feeling that if I give her a set with her favorite character on it, she might not use it like right away, but she might secretly practice uh, with them uh, on her own until she can get it right. Because Auntie was like that too. I, not with chopsticks, but with riding a bike. Like, it, I was one of the last ones in my neighborhood to learn to ride a bike. Uh, I was eight when I finally learned to ride a bike. And most people learn to ride bikes when they're like five or six or even seven. But I was eight. Um, and for the life of me, I could not understand how to ride a bike um, and I was getting really upset because all of my neighborhood friends most of them were boys um, were like teasing me because I couldn't ride a bike when even my younger brother Tony um, knew how to ride a bike and I was like what the heck I can't ride it so I had fallen off trying to ride a bike in front of everyone and I was really pissed off and you know my mom had called everyone in for lunch and I didn't go in I decided no I'm gonna learn how to ride this bike if it's the last thing I do and so while they were inside eating lunch I finally 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 learned how to ride a bike but I needed to do it on my own and I needed to do it when no one else was watching so I think that's how my niece Emmeline is. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that that's, that's what's happening with her too. So I don't know for sure, but that's, that's my inclination. Um, is she's not going to learn with all of us going out to eat, trying to egg her on and tell her we'll teach her right then and there. I think she's going to learn like secretly on her own. And one day she's just going to be like, oh, I don't need a fork. And show us her skills. That's my prediction. Also, this year, the Chinese Zodiac <coughs> is her year and my dad's year. And my sister-in-law Rosie's uh, year. You're the dragon. So, yeah. Yeah. There should be some great things happening for those folks. And apparently I was watching a video on IG. Obviously take it all with a grain of salt. But uh, this year, the year of the dragon, is supposed to be really good for monkeys, rabbits, or rats, and dragons, and snakes, I think. I think those were the five, um, but that's a lot of people in my family. So, you know, I already told you who our dragons are. Uh, monkeys include my niece Amaryllis 
and panda bear and um, rabbits, my mom. Rat is my brother-in-law, Andy. And snake, 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 snake. Is snake my cousin Scott or is it my cousin Andrew? One of them is a snake and I can't remember right now. I want to say, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, a lot of people, a lot of people in my family with those signs. But it's not my year. I'm the year of the rooster, so... No big thing happening this year, at least not according to my Chinese Zodiac, but when I embark on this journey of tidying up, let's see, let's see what that sparks because according to the book, I need to first start with clothes and take all the clothes every single item of clothing I have in my possession put it all in one place and pick up each item in my hands and see if I feel a spark of joy from the item and if not then I thank the item and I give it away give it away give it away now um, or throw it away but we don't keep it. So rather than finding things to discard, you're actually trying to find things you want to keep is what the book has been saying. And there was a really interesting thing in the book that I came across that I had to send to my dad and my mom and Panda Bear because it was really relevant to my dad. Um, <laughs> in the book... It said that um, some people can't deal with a tidy space um, because then it allows space for confronting uh, what they really need to deal with, like as far as mentally, like what what's what's on your mind. And so some people keep a place messy intentionally so that they don't have time to focus on dealing with what's really at the heart of the matter and so that really struck a chord with me because my dad my dad does not want to take like he doesn't want to throw anything away he keeps saying that this could be useful one day and blah 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 all the excuses of hoarding stuff and he has a bunch of stuff sitting by his chair in the living room to the point where it's like nobody can sit down. Like, this is why we don't have guests come over to the house very often at all. The only time, like, the house gets tidied up just a little bit um, is when we know my brother and his family is going to come visit. And then my mom goes on a, a tidying frenzy and Panda Bear helps out. And sometimes I'll help out, but most of the time I'm busy with work. So I don't get to do very much as far as helping tidy up but <laughs> they cleaned up really well they tidied up really well in the living room and uh, right when my brother left the first thing my dad did even before like the the couch got cold from their butt imprints is he went and grabbed all of his stuff and brought it back inside the house I was busy cooking, mind you. I was busy cooking. Uh, I was making my broccoli cheddar soup and and lamb chops. And I was in the kitchen. And for him to have to go to the garage, back in, through the kitchen, to the living room, he had to, like, you know, dance with me in the kitchen. Um... Mind you, my dad is still wearing a catheter. He shouldn't be lifting heavy things and and doing all that. And I told him I can help him with it later, you know, like after I was done cooking. But no, he insisted 
on moving all his stuff back into the living room, like straight away. And it was just like, what the heck? And so yesterday when we were at my sister-in-law Carla's house and I was mostly just resting because I, again, I wasn't feeling well this weekend. Um, you know, Panda Bear was having Amalika, the youngest, help him take down the Christmas tree and the Christmas decorations and all that. And then Lilith cleaned up all the toys. Um, so while they were doing all that, I was reading Marie Kondo's book. And when I came across that passage, I was just like, oh my gosh. And so I took a screenshot of it, highlighted the passage, and then I um, sent a text message to the group text with my mom and my pops and Panda Bear. And <laughs> when Panda Bear read it, he's like, whoa. And so when we got home from Carla's house, first thing he did was like, tell my dad, like, if you didn't read that passage, you should, because it literally like totally was, you know, that's him. Like it was really him. That's my dad in a nutshell. And so anyways, when I was listening to the audiobook Spark Joy, Marie Kondo talked about her, her dad and how he was a client of hers for a brief moment. Um, he reached out wanting her help in tidying up. And so I'm thinking that this journey that I'm going to embark on, I'm hoping that it sparks joy not just for myself, but for Panda Bear, my mom, and my pops. And maybe even Buddha too, because he lives here too. But here we go. I need to do a little bit of cleanup work, but this is the final result. And I'm loving it. I don't know. What do you guys think? This is my gray, gray scale, gray gradient Manny. I hope you like it. And sorry for all the rambling. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I will catch you all next time. I uh, don't know what theme yet, but we will see. We're getting closer and closer to the Lunar New Year, Chinese New Year. So definitely going to have something dragon related um, when that time comes. Until then, uh, if you've gotten through to the whole video... Let's have you leave, um, is there a square emoji? I feel like a square emoji would be like the best for this, only because of this frostbite Minecraft thingy. I don't know if there's a square emoji, but if there is, comment below with that. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.